Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Sundar Technologies Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Dollar Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touched on phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jayan Dawar from Sundar Technologies. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, good morning and thank you to Dollar Capital for the opportunity this morning uh, to talk about the major highlights of the results that we declared yesterday. Uh, so, at the cost of reiteration, everybody probably knows, but for many who don't, the two-wheeler industry in the last year grew at a rate of about 9.83%, and you'd be happy to know that Sandar against this growth grew by 26.14%. In the four-wheeler industry, the industry grew, grew at a rate of 5.92%, whereas Sandar grew at 15.41%. Uh, so we are very happy with uh, uh, the fact that our new capacities that have been set up in the last few years went into modes of closer to optimization, and that is what has reflected in the results. Uh, we at Sandar achieved a total income growth of 19% in quarter four and 21% versus FY23 on an annualized basis. Uh, we expect to continue this growth momentum over the last year, uh, and the current schedules of the customers, the demand in the market, and the geopolitical situation at this point shows that we should be very comfortable with achieving what the numbers that we are expecting to on a similar platform that we did in the last year. Uh, on a consolidated basis, EBITDA registered a growth of 140 basis points higher year on year basis. And uh, the investors will be happy to know that The management line got disconnected. We'll connect them. have connected with the management line. Yes, sir, go, go ahead, please. Thank you. I don't know where I got disconnected. Can somebody remind me? Sir, you were talking about consoled ability. Consoled ability. Okay. So I was saying that consoled ability registered a growth of 140 basis points on a YOY basis, uh, which is quarter four, and on an annual basis we grew by about 100 basis points. I'm also happy to say that our joint ventures have significantly improved. All joint venture companies taken together registered a revenue of 325 crores. Very happy to announce that uh, our helmet company, uh, Sandar Amkin, turned positive, contributed an EBITDA of 14.58% and a PAT of 4.71%, while Sandar Hansen uh, reached a level of EBITDA of 12.41%. Also, Sandar Vetron turned around and registered an EBITDA of 19.19% and PAT of 11.6%. Again, Winnercom, Sandar, Sandar, Hanshin 2 are PAT positive, uh, while Kwangsung, Sandar is EBITDA positive. So these are on the joint venture front. In terms of new projects that the company had invested in, 
Uh, the four sheet metal plants in Nalagad, Halol, Atibele, and Mysore are in mass production. Uh, Romania plant also is in commercial production, and we expect to see major ramp ups in 24 25. Uh, the machining for casting plants at Hosur and Mysore are also now operating at full scale. And uh, the future has a lot of potential, both in terms of volume and the customer base in this business. Uh, to meet the increased demand for casting components, the company is expanding its capacity in Western India to cater to the demand in that region. Uh, we expect to commercialize this by August of 24. Uh, the major focus would be to tap passenger vehicles, OEM, in addition to two-wheelers and commercial vehicles. Our EV projects, uh, we now have a wholly owned subsidiary called Sanzar Auto Electric Solutions Private Limited. Uh, we are happy to inform that the infrastructure development is almost complete and we expect to go into commercial production from July 24. We have two technical collaboration agreements here and we are working closely with them for the development of projects. So going forward, the focus areas are going to be generation of more free, free cash flows. We want to deleverage the balance sheet, improvement in return on capital employed. That's an agenda that we've had for the last few years and you've seen the improvements. We want to continue that path and give you better results. Improving operational efficiency, reduction of cost, control on new capex, maximum utilization and optimization of this capex, Integration of manufacturing plants continues. And of course, we are always in the market for diversification of our product portfolio, expanding the customer base and increasing content for vehicles. So those are largely the points that I wanted to mention in my opening remarks. I'm very happy to take questions. With me today, I have with me Mr. Yashpal Jain, who is the Chief Financial Officer, and he'll be very happy to answer questions on any numbers uh, that you may have uh, in this regard. I'm happy to give you a market preview or any questions in that regard. Thank you all very much once again for being here. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Burman Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning uh, to all present. Am I audible? Yeah. Great. Uh, my first question is with respect to understanding that this is the current capacity that you have expanded over the last two years, uh, which is the high sheet metal plants, then the Romania plant, uh, domestic aluminum capacity expansion. You had started a new Pune plant in Kavinder fabrication, and any expansion you would have done in locking and vision. Uh, how much can the revenue further expand, right? And 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 uh, this time. Hello. Hello. Yeah, the line got disconnected, so we'll move to the next. The next question is from the line of Aditya Sanjay Kondavar from Complete Circle Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Very happy to see, uh, you know, EBITDA margins move quarter on quarter, uh, you know, to double digit margins. So congrats on that. My first question was on the debt, you know, how much debt are we planning to repay this financial year? And, uh, uh, number two question is just some guidance on margin if you can. Thank you. I have more questions and then I'll come back on, in the queue. The management oh. line got disconnected. I will connect to join, sir. Sure.
Management line is connected. I just request the participant to repeat your question, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, congrats. You know, very happy as a shareholder to see the margins move from you know seven percent to almost eleven percent now. My first question was on the debt repayment. Any guidance on how much are we planning to prepay uh, this financial year? And number two, uh, if you could give any uh, color on the margin guidance. I have more questions, but I'll come back in the queue later. Yeah. Good morning, Aditya. This is Yashpal Singh. So I'll answer this question. Huh? Yeah. Regarding debt repayment, like we are having term loan facilities, as you know, we have been showing the balance sheet also. So we will be doing a term loan repayment as per the schedule, which can be around something 100 crores of repayment is passed for this year. Current for 24-25. Sure, sir. And any uh, guidance for, for margin, sir? Yeah, like. As we have given guidance for last two years, that we are on year-on-year -year basis, we are seeing marking a improvement of around 50 point basis. Now. So last year also for 23-24, we kept that guidance. 50 point basis will be improving for again the same guidance will be following for current year also. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishna from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes, you are. So, uh, my question was on the CAPEX that we've done. What kind of asset turns are we seeing on this CAPEX? And uh, when will we see the peak revenue potential coming in for this CAPEX that we've done? Normally, we keep an asset turn of three times, sir. It's a minimum asset turn, but that is over a period of time because, as you know, in an auto compound industry, it takes time to stabilize a plant in a range of two to three years. The plant gets stabilized. Sir. So, yeah. while planning for any new cases or projects, we take a timeline of two to three years to turn into asset turn of three times. The four sheet metal plants that have been put up by us in the last two and a half years. Part of them have started in partially in last year. Some of them are into mass scale production in the last quarter or last financial year. So gradually over a period of two to three years from today, you see that they will be working at this. I, I would say the crossing the asset turn of more than three times. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Burman Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, I think I was the first one to ask the question and uh, somehow uh, it was presumed that the line had dropped. Uh, so I'll just continue. Uh, I just wanted to understand that you had added a lot of capacities, right? And this is linked to the last question. Uh, what would be the utilization levels in the older and newer plants in like sheet metal and aluminum die casting? Uh, uh, so I'm just trying to understand because Q4 FY24, your annualized revenue was 3,700 crores. Uh, can this be substantially higher, 40, 50 percent higher because the existing capacity without doing any growth capex? Well, let me answer this question a little differently and then maybe uh, Mr. Yashpal Jain will be able to give you solid numbers. Uh, Pranay, thank you for that question. Our business, as you are aware, uh, constitutes diversified portfolio in terms of its product lines. Uh, so there are existing product lines, for example, whether it's locks or whether it's other proprietary parts, where you need only incremental uh, capex to grow capacity. However, the businesses of whether it is sheet metal or whether it is casting or some of the other areas require monumental changes in terms of new plants and new this, that, and the other. The way we stand today is we believe that a large part of the capex has already been done. However, there are still three plants under uh, uh, at different stages of going into commercial production where you will see the capacity. So on an overall basis, it is impossible for me to give you the capacity utilization. Suffice to say that in many plants, uh, we have capacities, especially in the newer ones, which range from 0%, uh, which, uh, which are going to go into commercial production, uh, to about 50% is what we have achieved in the new plants that have been set up in the next uh, 
in the last two years. Uh, your, to your question as to whether we can increase it by 50% on the same capex, yes, we can, but that doesn't mean the new capex will not be added because we are also looking for the future. But to your answer, whether we can grow it by 50%, my direct answer would be yes, close to 50% could be added. Uh, since the line got disconnected, I'm connecting him again. have connected the line of tensor. So go ahead, please. Uh, uh, I don't know where I was when I, when I got disconnected. So you said 50%, close to 50% expansion is possible, is what you said last. Yes, yes, it is possible. It is possible. However, that doesn't mean, like I said, that new further okay. capex will not happen because our growth continues and we have to also have to build a pipeline for the future. Perfect. That makes sense. Uh, so next question, I uh, heard an earlier statement of yours uh, when you said that given the demand and order visibility, you are expecting a similar growth next year as past year. So should I uh, extrapolate that to say that you can grow at a 20% growth if all things uh, play out as you expect it to in FI25 as well? Well, I won't put a number to it, but I don't see why not. Got it, sir. And I just wanted to understand, uh, in terms of the growth capex that you mentioned, uh, the casting plant in West India, and also the EV businesses that are supposed to start from next couple of quarters, uh, in these two segments, uh, how much capex have you planned uh, for this year, and how much can they contribute to revenues this year and next year? Well, I'll be, yeah, I'll answer this question, sir. So... Largely, we are through the projects. The projects will be commissioned in the month of August. And uh, like as we said in Western India, we are going with a die casting business. So we will be incurring a process of close to 30 crores on on overall basis for that plant. Large portion has already been released in the market. We are just waiting for the final base to come up for the payments. Yes, and on the EV part too? EV fund, we have, as we, if you remember our last investor call, last year we kept a target of crores of investment with a total outlay of 20 crores. So, time we have already spent, huh? another time we will be spending this year. Huh? Got it. So, any benefit keeping in mind that we are using our ex existing infrastructure right. uh, to, to launch the EV. So, while the numbers that Mr. Yashpal Jain are giving you, uh, are actually direct equipment and uh, product line services uh, which are being added. Uh, the infrastructure is already in play and we're using the existing infrastructure as of this moment for the Sandar Auto Electric business. Got it, sir. Uh, so last question from me on the overseas front. Uh, uh, after the plant, new plant Romania came in, uh, in Q4 FI23, the revenue sort of in increased from a 100 crore quarterly range to a 130 crore range. But since then, probably because of slowdown uh, or reduction in schedules, it has gradually come down and Q4's loss slight uptick, but still at 110 outflows, which is down YY. So just wanted to understand, have you seen any signs of recovery there and uh, when do you expect a meaningful uh, you know, pickup starting? Rane, so basically it was in the growth in the revenue okay. did not come so much from Romania. That is still behind what we had budgeted, especially on account of the Ukraine war that was going on in close neighborhood. The drop in revenue in the last quarter or the quarter before that a little bit came because of the strikes in the United States. 
and because of the strikes in the you know labor strikes in the car unions had strikes so there the revenue in mexico and some portion of barcelona dropped in the case of mexico the uh, uh, pickup dropped by almost 50% uh, for a couple of months uh, it is however back again now that the strikes are over and we are back into our normal uh, gp and the growth in romania will be an additional factor to whatever we are doing Understood, sir. I'll get back in with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Himesh Desai from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Hi. Uh, so my first question was: uh, Now that the JVs have turned profitable, what would be your outlook on their future growth? Well, my first reaction to this is that you know, once they've turned around and they've come into the regular aspect of things, uh, one would expect them to have a normalized growth in line with the growth of the company revenue. Okay. Uh, so my next question was on the cabin and fabrication business. Uh, so what are the current utilization and margin levels of this business, and uh, what kind of margin expansion are we uh, looking at going forward? Then uh, sir, line got disconnected. I'm connecting him again. Uh, I have connected the line of Mr. Jain. Oh, Mr. Nimesh, can you just repeat your question, please? Hi. Yeah. Uh, so my question was on the cabin and fabrication business. Uh, so what are the current utilization and margin levels for this business, and uh, what kind of margin expansion are we looking going forward? Oh, you want to come in? Yes, sir. So, cabins and fabrication, we operate around a margin of eight percent. You know, I mean, there's no much change in the margin structure of cabins and fabrication, being a heavy equipment as the items are very heavy uh, sheet metal based. Huh? And we expect that there can be an improvement of 50 to 100 point basis in the coming year once the new pune facility starts contributing to it. And what would be the utilization level? As of now, space-wise, if you ask me, we are uh, occupied with the complete space in cabins and fabrication. That was the reason. In Pune, we did an expansion from uh, one of the existing plants has been expanded with a, I would say, an additional plant in Panaswadi, which we are expecting to operate by August. Okay. And my last question would be for the locking and vision system. Uh, so, uh, what would your outlook be for the same? And are we expecting uh, an increase in content per vehicle? 
locking and vision yes sir would you like to answer yeah yeah so locking and uh, why we call it locking and mirrors there are several elements that go into it uh, there are new uh, product lines which have been added but the largest part again is smart locks and uh, the uh, group today would be very happy to know that there are two major product lines one for suzuki and one for honda that move on to the smart lock program starting in october and november and this of course is a major turn around and a pivot for the company which we've been expecting for the last few years uh, so that will take your uh, orbit into a different scenario altogether so that is those are the most important forward looking uh, uh, growth areas for us okay thank you sir thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Pranay Rup Chaturvedi from Bhuvan Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Again, uh, my next question is on our data point you disclosed uh, the product-wise segment revenue given the uh, presentation. I was comparing the Q3 numbers versus the Q4 numbers, and seems like uh, it, it could be. I am correct if I am wrong that some part of the other segment revenue has been moved to sheet metal because sheet metal contribution has gone up and others has almost halved. Is this true or uh, is this indeed the actual trend? No, basically, basically utilization of the uh, new facilities that were set up. The, we mentioned about the four plants that were set up for sheet metal. This right, is basically right. utilization of those plants, which have obviously increased the element of sheet metal. So while the others remain the same and continue to grow, uh, the growth in this particular segment has been the highest. Uh, so by others, I meant literally the others uh, segment that you disclosed, which used to be 14% of revenue in Q3, and it has become 7% of revenue in Q3. And sheet metal has gone from 12% of revenue to 19% of revenue. Okay. Uh, yes, Kalji, do you want to take this and give them the details of this? Yeah, exactly. So basically, the content of other remains the same because other businesses include the plastic business, the tools and dyes. and our aftermarket business but with the if you see the total figures like the revenue base of quarter 4 we compare with quarter 3 the element as per told of sheet metal was literally lesser compared to the growth of uh, uh, i mean in quarter 4 of the sheet metal so there has not been any shift to the product from other to the sheet metal only right secondly yes, other we might we might give them the increased bridge the bridge here between last year and this year closing where has yeah. that revenue come from that might be useful to answer this question so right. that which we have on a annual basis so like if you ask me out of total revenue from 2908 we have grown up to 3521 200 crores has been contributed by sheet metal and allied business that has been the major contributor to the revenue and i casting has been close to 180 crore sir these two major are the contributors sir in this sir other has given us a total revenue in yearly basis 66 crore sir so on an average it comes to 15 16 crore sir quarter and that's our miscellaneous business we cannot classify into any segment because our volumes are very low like tools dyes we have plastic business we have after market business which are in the stage of being growing up might be in the coming year they may also find a position like other products sir got it sir and uh, is it possible to disclose because this other segment is a significant part of the total business double digit percentage uh, that how much margins you clock here i know it's difficult because uh, it's a model of multiple different things but is it even possible to figure out if it's at the company level or dilutive or accretive something on those lines oh on an overall basis it is very difficult as we told because it's a cluster of many type of products sir but if yes, if you ask me after market business one of the contributors it contributes around 8% of margin for us and uh, it has been a larger contributor tools and dyes are there again they are in a double digit margin they are the two major contributors in other segments got it sir uh, that is that is clear thanks a lot sir i'll get back to you thank you very much Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Shubhru. An individual investor, please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, my first question is with regards to one particular product that you are developing, which is the motor controller. So, please, can so, you, you enter your sound a little weak also? Just a second. I'm on the handset mode. Is it better now? Oh, no, it's better. Yes, it's all right. Tell me. Yes, sir. I just wanted to understand a little bit more about one particular product, which is the motor controller. So, could you speak about the potential market size, uh, uh, which we will have maybe in the next two to three years, the competitive landscape, and uh, what kind of competition we face from uh, uh, the foreign players, and uh, what are our aspirations in this product? Uh, to answer this question in summary, uh, we have a motor controller and our rated power is 250 kilowatt, uh, uh, 250 watt, 2 kilowatt, and 6 kilowatt. The application of this is towards the two-wheeler and the three-wheeler. Uh, we expect that our product readiness in these three different uh, configurations is June 24, July 24, and November 24. Now, you are aware that the market size of India in EV segment, especially in the two-wheeler space, is large. Uh, the USP that we have is that most of our product is localized. And we as a company do a lot of sub-constituent uh, sub parts in-house, whether it is the aluminum body, whether it is the plastic body, whether it is the PCB, we have our own line compared to many other competitors who are today importing these subparts from China and other places. Uh, so the customers obviously want to have a localized product and therefore we don't see an element of an issue of demand. Uh, we are now in the process of uh, uh, working in conjoinedness with our customers. Our ICAT approvals have already been done uh, and we see that once the supply starts, uh, the volumes, of course, are dependent on the Indian market, and that is as much your guess as mine. Uh, but we don't see too much of an issue in, in having a demand for the product lines on motor controllers for us. Sir, uh, just uh, to uh, take this forward, what would be the uh, total contribution of the total EV cost for a motor controller? Mm -hmm. I understand that the value of this can range from 4,000 rupees to 9,000 rupees per vehicle. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivam Dave from ProDG Investment. Please go ahead. Oh, yes, Mr. Shivam, go with the question. Oh, Mrs. Shivam, are you there? Is there just no response from the participants? We'll move to the next. The next question is from the line of Rajat from Inkrot AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, so just uh, one bookkeeping question. So I was just going through your balance sheet and I see that your receivables uh, have uh, somehow shot up uh, significantly at the end of uh, this year, uh, which is up like 37% on a YOY basis. Uh, could you give us some color why receivable days have uh, gone up? Receivables have gone up, you mean to say? Yeah. Currently at 402 crores versus 293 crores at the end of last year. Yeah, so what happens is that, like uh, as we mentioned in our call, sir, the new plants they have come into mass production, which were not there uh, last year if you compare it to last year. So obviously, that receivers the payment is not due, which we have received in the month of April. Now. That is one of the reasons. With the increase in the turnover, the size of the receivers has also increased. But if you see our effective receivers, they, they have come down and they have improved. 
we are close to 35 days of receiving data overall so yeah okay that uh, yeah that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jay from dalit capital please go ahead uh hello sir am i audible yes please Yeah, hi, uh, hi, sir. So, so my first question is like, was, was there any one-off during this quarter uh, in terms of uh, any um, fund time cost or uh, any price appreciation? Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, was there any uh, one-off in terms of price compensation or incentives for this uh, quarter? Incentives from where government bodies or from the customers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the government bodies. No, this quarter doesn't have any incentives from government bodies. It's a normal revenue line of the operation. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, and so, uh, could you just throw some uh, light on your locking business? Like, if, were there any new customer acquisitions or uh, some incremental business from your existing clients during this quarter? Uh, like locking this yes sir very well like to answer no no i just want to again reiterate the fact that the locking system a business is cat new platform with smart lock where the value of the smart lock is can be anywhere between 8 to 10 times of the lock that we produce so for the company it's a big thing and we have two launches now happening in october and november the landscape of that particular business will change dramatically oh, okay so okay so uh, apart from that do was there any um, like were there any interest shown by the ev segment for the smart lock like uh, we have tvs for a price you um or for ola or other uh, or other players which are into ev uh, are they interested in the smart locking business Yes, we are talking to all of them, but the first launches that will happen in India will be Suzuki and Honda, uh, which will take it on a mass scale. Now, obviously, there are others which are doing it. Whether we are supplying now to M and W, uh, there are many who are talking about it, and some have launched in very very small volumes. But obviously, our interest was mass volumes. So the mass volumes are the ones that I'm talking about, which will take on the market. for its first direction and gradually all of them will move on to that particular platform on a mass basis oh, okay so okay so thank you so uh, i do have one more question uh, so since tvs being your largest uh, customer uh, how do you expect it to contribute going ahead well i think the capacity uh, that has been set up especially in the sheet metal division in the last two years the new plants that have been set up they have largely been set up for tvs therefore you have seen that uh, pocket grow a little higher but i think we are now at a stabilizing station stage and uh, uh, tvs today uh, being the largest uh, whenever that happens even in the previous scenarios of sandar if hero was higher our idea is to bring that percentage down not in terms of uh, the volume of business but to grow the other businesses faster so that exercise will continue oh, okay okay sir also uh, and can you just uh, throw some light on the lo- on your romania plant and how do you see it going ahead post uh, the strike and uh, after the geopolitical issues happening so see the geopolitical issues we have set up that plant and to that end we are utilization of the existing capacity is in 25% rate so obviously there is a huge upside and now things are changing things are improving and our two customers that we have there are growing their businesses in terms of sourcing it more from the eastern european nations like romania so we expect that number to now continuously grow on 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 in terms of the revenue that we generate from that Oh, the strike was in North America, so there Romania was not at fault. It was Mexico that dropped its revenues. Okay, so okay, so okay, so thanks, thanks, thanks a lot for the clarity and uh, best of luck going ahead. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivam Dave from Prodigy Investment. Please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Shivam, go with the question, please. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yes. A little yeah, louder um, would be better, Shivam. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is this better? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, congrats on the good set of numbers. Uh, I had one doubt on the uh, smart lock segment. Uh, what is the order size that we have uh, got from Suzuki right now? The Suzuki order book is of a level of 550 crores over three years. 550 crores over three years, right. And this should start from uh, when will it start contributing to the top line? October or November launch this year. Obviously, it's oh. gradual. And therefore, we will only get a part of the revenue in this year. They gradually add on to vehicles and vehicles and vehicles. But that, I think, okay. is the overall summary of what we're looking at. Okay. Okay. That is my only question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. Hi. So earlier you mentioned about some, uh, you know, uh, developments with regards to the capacity expansions. So, for example, you said expanding capacity for casting components in Western India. So can you just reiterate on that and any other key developments with regards to capacity you're taking this year? Well, uh, I can give you broadly and maybe Ashpalji can uh, give you greater details. We are setting up one new plant which is coming up in Kate City in Pune. And we expect to have it commissioned by August of this year. In terms of other capacities, we had one big plan, uh, which had four divisions in Oragadam in Chennai, which was the base for our um, cabin and fabrication division, our casting division, our sheet metal division, and the auto division. That plant has now been given completely to the business for the growth plans in Chennai. And other three businesses have moving out uh, to set up their own facilities, some in rented premises, some in a new uh, facility. And therefore, all four businesses are growing, and that capacities are being set up in place as we speak. In the meantime, the Mysore facility that we had set up again for sheet metal, where the capacity utilization was very low, is going to get to a higher capacity utilizations in this year. Okay. And uh, I believe, uh, so for EBITDA margins, I think you said we'll follow the same guidance and we'll see an increment of 50 basis points. Is it for the whole year? Are you expecting? Yeah, it is for the whole year, or year on year basis. So over of FY24, you're expecting a 50 basis point increase? Yeah, 50 basis point increase. And just for all the business, you know, a general direction, guidance, and an outlook. So, uh, which like segments are firing on all cylinders and will take the company, you know, to uh, uh, will give a good amount of growth in FY25? You can just explain that because in two wheel and four wheel industries, we've also seen like more than two times, uh, you know, volume growth. So, is it likely to continue? So, how, how are we, uh, you know, faring well? Uh, 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 well, I don't know why how to answer this question, but largely from our understanding, we are a conserve other schedules. Uh, so you want to a lot was made out in. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so even last year, while there's a lot of hula boo the industry overall grew by 8.99%. And like I said, Sandar grew by 21%. So we conservative on the numbers that are presented by the OEM, but we ourselves are very confident of the new content per vehicle that we've taken on in the last few years, and this will continue to grow. So at this point of time, we are quite uh, uh, happy uh, Hello? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sir. I, I believe your voice was breaking, but I, I got the gist of it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Pranay Rao from Burman Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, so just one question, how much maintenance capex and uh, growth capex totaling everything you mentioned would we do in FY25? Well, uh, if you ask me for maintenance capex and growth, uh, so maintenance capex would be around, uh, in terms of you ask me turnover, 3 to 4 percent is spent on the maintenance capex. All right. Because what happens is that there are government guidelines also in terms of running the generators, REGT guidelines, ESG requirements. So 3 to 4 percent goes to the maintenance capex. So, sir, that would mean around 130 to 140 crores of maintenance capex. Yeah, yeah, that is obvious. Okay. And uh, growth capex? Growth capex, another 100 crores you can take. Part of the maintenance capex also goes to the growth capex. Huh? Some capex are common. <laughs> On an overall basis, you should see it. Huh? So overall, uh, if I were to sum it up uh, for the investors, overall the gross block will increase by 200 crores. Roughly by 200 crores. Would you know what happens in terms of maintenance capex? We are doing some uh, increasing the efficiencies of the machines also, which ultimately leads to the more efficiency in running the operation. So you can call it as maintenance capex or you can call it as growth capex. It's a mix of both. What is the rank? And in fact, 26 levels should also be similar uh, in terms of maintenance and growth. Well, maintenance, as I told, 3 to 4 percent, we will continue to do it so that we keep uh, our place at the, I mean, the new requirements. Huh? Growth right. capex, as of now, we need to, we will be making the plans uh, once we cross September, I mean, the first half of current financial year. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shrinik Shah from Atul. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, please. Uh, 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 sir, I wanted to ask, sir, what are your three to five year plans? Can, can you please elaborate on that? Three to five year plan? Uh, where do we see the company going in next five years time frame, basically? Well, I think a lot of groundwork has been done in the last few years. And the idea is that we are ready with new technologies, with new content per vehicle, uh, with capacities, with infrastructure, with the team that has been restructured. Uh, so the... Momentum of growth that you have seen in the last two years, we expect that momentum to continue over the next three to five years. So uh, are, we, are we saying that we can go for like 20% every year for next five years, three to five years? Well, uh, like I said, there are many uh, ifs and buts, especially with a lot of uncertainty, um, whether it is geopolitical or it is health or it is companies' economic growth or political scenarios. Uh, but keeping in mind that India, uh, everybody being bullish about how India is in terms of its demographic dividend, in terms of its projected growth, I see no reason uh, why we should not be able to achieve comfortably what we have in the last few years. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. And one more question, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what kind of revenues can we expect uh, at full capacities in our all the joint venture businesses, heavy businesses? Like we have seven heavies all around the globe, uh, and we have a very high amount of capital employed over there also. So, please, you can elaborate on that businesses. Well, uh, there are three things. One is the international business. The joint ventures are all in India. The international business is a hundred percent subsidiary. There, while capital is employed, a large part of that capital is employed in working capital because the payment terms in international markets are much longer than they are in India. Uh, so that's point one two. Where joint ventures in India are concerned, we are continuously in talks with our joint venture partners to introduce new levels of technology. And as technologies are changing and being adapted in India, uh, we see a very satisfactory momentum in the growth targets that are being kept. Uh, I would say that they would be in line with the overall growth of the company. 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एंड सर वन मोर क्वेश्चन सर व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मार्जिन्स कैन वी एक्सपेक्ट इन स्टडी स्टेट ओवर नेक्स्ट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मार्जिन्स आर अटेनेबल फॉर द कंपनी एज अ होल आई नो वी आर एक्सपांडिंग इट बट मेंशन दिस सेवरल टाइम्स आई मेंशन दिस सेवरल टाइम्स दैट अ स्टेबल कंपनी मार्जिन्स कैन बी बिटवीन 12 एंड अ हाफ टू 13% इन टर्म्स ऑफ एवरी टाइम however there are many restrictions that come in which bring the margins down especially for a company that is in a growth platform so in the last few years uh, our margins have dropped on account of large investments that were being done and a lot of our operational ebitda was being lost towards these growth capital however now that we stabilize you seen the change and that change is bringing back the margins back into operational uh, parameters therefore that is the reason why ashwalji has just mentioned that even in this year you will see about a 50 basis point improvement in the margins that we will have over the last year okay thank you thank you so much and i appreciate sir thank you thank you thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question the next question is from the line of aditya sanjay from complete circle capital please go ahead uh, hi again sir just wanted to ask you and just get some qualitative qualitative thoughts from you uh, you know in addition to the three products that we have in the ev segment you know are we having any conversations with other oems or are, are we looking at any other products just qualitative comments will do don't want any number around it yes so uh, yes the answer is yes uh, on both fronts uh, while new products will not be launched besides these three in the current year we are working on several others it's several oem uh, and co developing with several oem so you will see many more of them in the kitty as we go forward and sir uh, just another question you know this this ev products you know how how uh, what percentage of the revenue pie would they contribute to say in the next 3 5 years do you have any internal targets in mind that's my last question thank you well i would not be able to give you any forecast on the percentage in terms of overall revenue uh, but uh, suffice to say that over the next 3 or 4 years they would become a significant number uh, in the overall uh, revenues of the company going forward thank you and profitability thank you sir and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of himshu desai from dalit capital please go ahead hello yes please. hi uh, just a couple of questions uh, the first one on the aluminum die casting business have you had any new order wins in the segment and uh, have you added any new customers or new products in this line uh, you are asking about aluminum die casting yes sir yeah regular development so i mean the new product development is going on that's the reason you can see that the vertical has grown i mean it has shown a very good growth in last two years of time huh? and in fact we are expanding this capacity to western india also in pune as per mentioned in shared city huh? so largely we are catering to major uh, two wheeler customers in aluminium die casting and we see no reason as to why we should not grow in this vertical in coming period of time huh? okay and uh, just my second question was uh, on the tool and dies business uh, what outlook do we have for the next couple of years well tools and dies business is it's not a very i would say recurring business i mean it goes up based on the demand of the customer is seeing a good demand of 20 25% over last two years eh? i think it should go in the same okay sir thank you that's it thank you thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question the next question is from the line of jay from dalit capital please go ahead oh uh, hello sir thanks for the opportunity again so i just wanted to ask uh, what uh, is your outlook on the rn basket going ahead what market going to hit rm basket or raw material cost raw material cost is an astrologer's call 
and uh, very difficult for me to ask answer that question you have seen some commodities starting to go up uh, our standard answer and our standard line of approach to this is that this is a straight pass through to the customers however there is a certain lag when the prices start to go up and there is a little bit of pain that comes but overall on a larger platform this is a pass through so uh, whatever happens it really doesn't affect the overall volume of uh, profit uh, for an organization especially in the auto component arena Oh, oh, okay, so okay, so thank you. Oh, uh, sir, and could you just throw some light on how much this lag is? Is it is it a one quarter lag or it is more than that? Or uh, when the lag is passed on to the customers? The lag is typically our costings are done every three months. Uh, because of a lot of volatility that started to happen about three years ago, uh, there are some companies that shifted onto a one month platform, but more often than not, costings are done. over a period of after a period of 3 months every 3 months so the lag is 3 months okay so okay so okay so oh uh, and so one more question from my end oh uh, bhai can you just throw some light on your assembly business and the outlook going ahead the assembly business is a part assembly business part manufacturing business where we manufacture steel rims we do the plating we do the handles and so on and so forth that continues to grow but the rate of growth is that of the industry so if you look at that business if the entire industry grows at 9% 10% that's the growth that we get in that particular business the other growth or the accentuated growth is coming from new product line okay 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 thank you so much thank you so much all right thank you As that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Well, I want to thank uh, Dollar Capital and I want to thank all the people who joined this particular call. We are very happy that you could make it, and uh, uh, we, at our end, level uh, to to work together to take advantage of the Indian landscape and the Indian auto industry. uh and we hope that we will be able to give you results which are probably better than what we have done in the last quarter with that thank you all very much once again thank you on behalf of dollar capital I, that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you oh.